So alright guys, so we're out here in the big redneck food plot and the name pretty much speaks for itself. It's the largest food plot right here on the hunting grounds and we've got a big redneck blind smack dab in the middle of it. This year I came in with killer food plots, border patrol, and really kind of broke this food plot up. Now as I broke it up, I decided to do something a little bit different and pretty much plant with three different types of scenarios in here. So I kind of had a controlled and I planted like I always plant and then based on what I've learned over the last few years I went through and I broke up portions of this food plot in in a different way that way I could compare it to the controlled and see which ones the deer preferred all season and it's going to probably surprise you now if you've been following the show for any time you know that I love planting soybeans for whitetails they absolutely just devour them they're just one of the best overall things that you can plant for deer to browse on that's going to give them the just the most protein and energy and that's just the most attractive thing to whitetails now that being said the information I'm fixing to tell you um, might change your perspective on planting soybeans depending on where you're at in the United States so we're here in southwest Missouri we don't get very big snows um, and so to plant soybeans with the mentality that we're going to get a big snow and we want something that's sticking up through the snow that's easy browse for the whitetails just doesn't need to be there because it's not going to happen. I think this year if you added all our snow accumulations up total in southwest Missouri we might hit around two inches and that's it. So that being said, I think the soybeans are great for a spring and summer and early fall food source right here um, in our area or in the southern area of the United States for whitetails. It creates an absolute surplus of tonnage for the deer to browse on. But now when it comes into the fall and the hunting season, I'm seeing a whole lot of different information coming in that the deer are telling me when they come into my food plots here. So what I've done in the past is I've come in and I have planted with the RTP and planted these soybeans. They have a great uniform stand of these soybeans in my food plots all summer, uh, spring and into early fall and they grow great. I don't use any fertilizer. I'm just putting everything that I grow right back into the ground and we have soybean heights of four and a half to upwards of five and a half, sometimes even close to six foot, but normally around that five and a half or five foot tall soybeans everywhere. And that's keeping up with a lot of deer pressure. We have a high quantity of deer on this property and these food plots sustain heavy browse and you'll definitely, there's tons of evidence of it um, during that spring and summer, but it gets to a point that they just can't keep up with it. So we do get some really good height and they're absolutely loaded with bean pods. Right now, if you come through the food plot, most of them, 90% um, of these soybeans have either, they've been stripped by the deer, they've been eaten, or the pods have dried enough now that they've opened up and they've dropped the seeds um, for the most part. But they're pretty empty stalks around here. There are some that um, still are holding some what look like bean pods, but they're just dried up. They're just some of them that, they were just some of the pods that started growing that didn't develop any seeds in them, so they were pretty much empty and they've just dried up and uh, nothing has touched those. But with that being said, usually I'll come through here and I'll have a great stand, a uniform stand of soybeans over this entire food plot. I'll come in with a broadcast or uh, spreader either on the four wheeler or I'll just hand seed it with a bag uh, seeder that's I've got draped over my shoulder and I seed. And what I'm basically hoping for is that there's there's no weed competition down low because the canopy of the soybeans have outcompeted anything else from growing in underneath. So there's all that exposed soil at the bottom and then as that seed falls down in there it's going to establish itself. The problem that we do have is a good percentage of those seeds that make it down by the time that they're actually going to get sunlight these soybeans start losing their leaves um, there's just not enough growing season. There's not enough daylight left in the growing season for them to, to really amount to much of anything. So then you're solely hoping that your bean pods that are standing, your dried bean pods, are enough to tr attract the deer in here. So that's what I did this year. I kind of had the control group that I'm standing in right now. It grew up to four and a half, five foot, it was at least five foot on average 
threw out here with beans, came through with the four wheeler and I planted this food plot, or I overseeded this area. And knowing that when I did drive over it, that I was kind of hoping that some of the soybeans would lay down, bring some of that sunlight in a little bit and hopefully promote a lot more growth up underneath. Um, but as you can tell, even though I spread some heavy seed on it, there is little to nothing left in here. And of course, yes, the deer did get in here and browse some underneath, but if you look at some of the comparison areas on this food plot that I'm fixing to show you, you'll see that there is a good amount of tonnage left for the deer because I planted in a different method. But in here, there's very little, there's dirt and there's weeds, <laughs> a lot of signs of armadillo in here browsing and digging around. Uh, for grubs, but uh, overall, this is a, a, a biological desert now of stems. Um, and throughout the season, as we sat in the redneck blind there, I was able to collect all this data watching how the deer came in, where they preferred to come in and feed at. And this was one of the areas that had very low deer traffic. At night, you'd see deer in here browsing, but when they would come in, they were coming into some of the other areas in this food plot that I designed um, because I figured that's exactly what would happen based on what I've seen in the past. So as of right now, this is really not doing much of anything. We'll come in here, we're going to knock down these stems, we'll get back in with RTP. All this will be organic matter that will be just right there almost on the surface level because we're just barely going to disc this up and so it's going to create a lot of organic material right there and kind of create a nice little seed bed and protection for the seed. But this area is something that I'm going to get away from doing is having a uniform sand of soybeans and then coming in and broadcasting over the top because uh, you'll see that here in the southwest Missouri area or any I would think of the southern states where you have warmer temperatures throughout the entire hunting season this is not the preferred area for deer to come in and browse. There's a lot of other things that you can do to make sure that the deer are gonna come in and concentrate on your property. So I actually had a utilization up in this area and even if you look in the utilization cage which kept out all the rabbits and everything else, there is very little green vegetation down low. You see a few sprigs of some wheat and stuff in there but otherwise it's just uh, weed. And then even the soybeans that are in there now at this point have all dried up and either dropped their seeds. Um, but it's a very good representative like that you don't see very much difference between the utilization cage and what is out here other than the amount of bean pods that are left on there. Um, yeah, bean pods are great. The deer came in and they browsed on them. We saw a few come in and hit on some of the, the bean pods, but what I'm going to show you is what they really came in and hit on. Real quickly before I got to the other areas of this food plot, I did want to, as I was walking across here, I wanted to show you guys this. This area is one of the areas that I came in and I had standing soybeans all the way up to the redneck blind back behind me, but I really wanted to concentrate how deer funneled and walked through this food plot. So I did that by planting these barrier systems that really were tall. Um, it's now you know in March and they have just been beaten down and browsed down and pushed over um, but they were six seven eight some of them even 12 foot tall in some of these areas that really funneled the deer created great walls but even inside the food plot I went in and heavily dissed this area and you don't see any um, soybean stems up in here I dissed them all in and then came in and planted uh, a couple different mixes throughout the food plot from killer food plots that had you know some rape and some turnips and rye and wheat and some stuff that were planted strategically in and around the redneck blind which really paid off because every deer did exactly what we wanted to when they came in this food plot they funneled they worked every deer pretty much even though this is like a four acre food plot came within 20 yards of the redneck almost every time they came in not really for sure how well you can see this area back behind me this is a different section of this food plot that I decided to work up in a different way so with my thoughts this planting season, it was to allow more sunlight to penetrate down through the soybeans to give me more growth of everything that I'm broadcasting over top, which primarily in this food plot, like I mentioned, were turnips and rape and um, rye and wheat, and maybe there was even some clover mix in it. I put a couple different mixtures from killer food plots in different areas in this uh, food plot. but. So in doing that, in different sections of this food plot, I broke up the soybeans in different methods with the RTP. So right here in this section, 
it's about a, a quarter section of this food plot I came in I said you know what I'm gonna open up 50% of this pretty much I'm gonna take 50% of the stand of soybeans and I'm gonna disc it really aggressively and come in and plant uh, my mentality was it's going to grow really well where I disc it up and then the edges of the soybeans from the area that I disc I knew um, the the rate of germination was going to get uh, pretty good as it started in on that edge and as it tapered even thicker back into the soybeans it was just going to dwindle down um, these soybeans in this area were hit really really hard by the deer so they didn't have as much height this is one of the areas that the deer like to come in first and they kind of fan out um, and so there was a lot more growth up underneath these soybeans because it didn't have the canopy on it um, but it did work really well and I will tell you that the deer when they came in this food plot they would s spend seconds coming in from the edges through these soybeans and browsing until they hit the destination spot right here in the middle which is right in front of the redneck um, great opportunity for rifle but again um, this and it leads pretty much right to the green roundabout that it's right around the redneck which leads every deer within you know a 20 yard shot with a bow um, but this really paid off. Uh, I have found that here in these more probably southern states and in southwest Missouri, in deer season, if they have the choice between greens and, and pods on these soybeans, they're going to come into the greens. They want the turnips. They want the rape. They want the wheat and the rye and the oats. That's what they desire. They want that green. It's digestible for them. It's more attractive to them at this time of year. Um, and so to go in and have a universal stand of nothing but soybeans that you go in and you broadcast in and you know a, a small percentage of that germinates and uh, and you're pretty much left with a standing with soybean stems and pods. It is not the most desirable thing for the deer in our area so I really saw a higher concentration of deer in this green area right here where I'm standing um, and then it even it it helped the germination um, underneath these soybeans that were up next to this area that I'd come in and dissed up all right so down to one of the final areas and this is the area that I'm most excited about so <laughs> I promise, you know, when you watch the footage from this, people thought I measured out this food plot. And I literally did this just on the fly, on the tractor, while I was pulling the RTP around going, you know what, I'm going to take out 50% of these soybeans and make straight lines. And um, based on my experience of working at golf courses back in the day in, in high school and college, uh, I'm pretty good at picking a point and then driving straight to it and picking some straight lines through there. But, so what I did on these two sections, Again, these are two different quarters of this food plot, and I wanted to take 50% of it at least this time and convert it over to making sure it had green tonnage. So I came in, and just every other row, row I would break down with that RTP and disc it up really well. And my thoughts on this is going, okay, I know at least 50% of it is going to be greens. And then again, where those lines of the disc and the soybeans meet, because of the amount of sunlight that's gonna be able to penetrate in, at least in some of those barriers, I'm gonna get a better germination over maybe, you know, two to three feet inside of those stand of soybeans because it's got sunlight penetrating. And these rows aren't too wide, you know, they're, some of them are about eight foot wide, so you take two or three feet off each side, and that leaves a very small amount um, of area inside the middle of these strips that are not allowed to get sunlight in. And these really paid off. So um, if I were to plant soybeans, in the future, which I am going to continue planting soybeans, I'm just going to use them in a different method based on what I've learned here, is I'm going to go through and plant strips of soybeans, especially in the southern states. Now if I'm in a northern state and I'm going to receive, uh, you know, feet of snow at a time, you bet that I want to have a lot of that tonnage up above the snow, but we don't get that down here in the south. And so we're planting these soybeans which are highly, highly attractive and really good for the deer during the spring and the summer and even early fall but when they lose that green vegetation their attention goes to still wanting greens and we have nothing but stems left um, 
it's going to have the deer coming in but you can make your place much more attractive by making sure that you have a higher percentage of green tonnage on your property especially like i said in the south but through here this worked great um i absolutely loved how the deer worked these again i built them where the strips all kind of funneled to like a main highway which the highway went straight across in front of the redneck every single time all these intersection points like were designed to bring the deer within bow range and i was really happy with the way this turned out now i am not dissing soybeans at all i i think they're a must-have tool for managing whitetails on a property if you want to have a highly attractive property but there's means and methods of planting them that are better in uh, certain areas of the United States. And so, so if I plant soybeans this year, which I'm probably going to, I'm going to come in, I'm going to utilize strips of soybeans, and they probably aren't going to be very wide. They'll just be probably a six foot wide path with that RTP, and that's going to be it. I don't want a universal stand. I want to make sure that I have these areas where I can come in and I can plant in between and uh, Killer Food Plots has a lot of varieties that I'll be planting. They even have some um, mixes that even have buckwheat that I'm going to start utilizing a lot on this property in that spring, summer, you know, early fall kind of um, planting season. So um, I'm really excited about how this turned out and the deer really did utilize this. I would say out of the three different areas on this food plot, this was one of the areas that they used the most other than the green patch that was a little bit bigger in that sloth that was right in front of the redneck there. But I have one more thing to show you that were the most attractive areas in this food plot during the hunting season. So there's two areas of this food plot that this summer I came in and kind of experimented with alfalfa. And to be honest, it failed for me. And uh, it was over browsed and um, I just didn't maintain it in the way that it needed to be. And so they were failed. And so I didn't like having pretty much close to a half an acre that was nothing but weeds that was that was just not um, anything that was attractive to deer so I came back in pretty quickly and uh, planted, planted this in some different varieties and this fall these were primarily in carnage brassicas I believe um, but I did come in and I mixed them with some of the other mixtures that had uh, the wheat and the rye and the oats and stuff so I got a really good mix on both these areas these areas were just areas of a ton of green tonnage and if there was an area that the deer once it came into this food plot were going to funnel to and run to it was these areas our, our hunt giveaway winner Billy killed his buck just on the back corner right back here in this green area as he was coming in looking for does we had Aiden shoot a doe over here and it was just where the deer concentrated don't get me wrong these other areas of the food plots with the standing soybeans they would hit on them and work their way across but even if they started on the back side of this food plot and which is you know 90 yards 100 yards away from here the deer could be here within a matter of minutes if not seconds sometimes um, but this is where their destination was these larger green patches so that's what i'm gonna start focusing on i'm going to be planting a different variety of seed uh, throughout the spring and summer months from killer food plots right here on the hunting grounds i'm excited to show you guys what i'm going to be utilizing there as well as utilizing still a lot of their border patrol to to make these fences basically these these green fences that are going to funnel the deer. So I'm really excited with the designs that I'm going to be coming up with this spring. I'm going to take you guys through that entire process and it's going to promise my deer that I'm going to have enough tonnage um, to sustain them through the whole season but at the same time have my property highly attractive and drive all the deer within hopefully a bow and gun range to wherever we are hunting. This year I will tell you guys we took off at least 10 deer off this 100 acres and you couldn't tell. Um, this next year we're going to have to up it even more. We have the property that every deer for over a square mile wants to come to and once they're here they are now staying here because we've got the habitat and we've got the food and we've got the water and so even though 
Um, we upped it this year and took 10 deer off. You could not tell by the amount of deer that we have in these food plots every single night right now. And if you even look at the brows, nothing is more than you know an inch. <laughs> With some of this warmer weather that we're getting in the sunshine today, we're getting you know an inch and a half or two inch tall. But by the time it sprouts and greens up, they move through and they wipe it out once again. So we've got to increase the amount of tonnage. I've established as much food plot area as I can on this property. The thing I'm focusing on now is just the habitat improvement, working on timber stands, on edge feathering, and I'll show you guys all that as well. Just um, making sure that they have a lot of browse and a lot of cover out there, and then, and then basically the mindset is that the food plots are just an extra benefit, but I could sustain and attract deer with the way my, my natural habitat is uh, managed on this property. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed all this information. It was a lot of information, but it was one that I wanted to get out there and I planted this and designed it for a certain reason so I could watch the deer all season long. We spent so many hours up there. It was absolutely insane in that redneck and in these surrounding tree stands that we got to see and we know exactly what the deer wanted when they came in this food plot. And uh, that's exactly what I was just trying to tell you guys, share that information. Um, but like I said, it's not what I'm doing here is going to work on everybody else's hunting grounds. It depends where you're at in the United States and um, there's so many different factors out there. But uh, hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what you can do on your property. There's a lot more coming out. Comment down below what you thought about this. Um, tell me what else you want to see and make sure you subscribe. Go follow us on all our other channels and accounts and stuff out there. Everything's down below. And until next time, have a better than average day. Wait for that wind to pass. Love the wind. Springtime. It's going to get in every shot.